none of the none of the fires have been have been able to determine the cause of, of any of the fires here yet, and, and who was responsible. You know, so you know, uh, there, there's the ability to put. I think most everybody here understands that we're kind of in an area that is prone to if there's a fire, it's not good. Um, but maybe outsiders that are coming in, and um, if we put some signs up, that may not may not uh, hurt. So it's something we can make a note of or doing something like that. Yeah, you know, and the only challenge with signs, and not to say there's not a valid point, is that, uh, and, and I've had this conversation before, is that sometimes it would seem like it'd be necessary to rent a couple of old drive-in movie billboards and post all the things that people aren't supposed to do, because we end up with so many things that are just, it's so intuitively obvious to us that there's a lot of things that you're not supposed to be doing that, that people are doing, so it, it, it creates an interesting challenge for us, but we'll, we'll certainly think about it. All right, here goes Michelle. Um, just, just to remember that yes, we have a lot of technology available to us, and I know things have progressed a lot since 1989, but there are other disasters besides fire that Brisbane needs to look at where we won't necessarily have electricity, internet, cell phones, or telephones at our disposal, and we really need to have an active plan on how to deal with that and how to communicate in those situations. Because in 1989, um, cell phones didn't work after the earthquake, and landlines were sketchy, and we had no electricity in Brisbane. We got ours back before San Francisco did. But it was difficult to communicate, and many people in town didn't realize the scope and the extent of the earthquake until people filtered back from the city and, and spread the word. People across the country knew what was happening here a lot faster than we did. And so we need to have access. In well. I'm going to take one last question or comment and then just so we can get the other events that we have moving on in here. So, Lori, I think you have Yeah, um, one question I have is, you know, nowadays a lot of people have alarms. I have an alarm in my house and stuff. Are we supposed to put our, can we put our alarms on? Do you guys want us not to put our alarms on? Oh. If we're in evacuation mode? Or, you, know, you know, like a, a ADT and stuff like that? Uh, burglar alarms? Yeah, burglar alarms and stuff. Yeah. I mean, should we no. leave them off? Yeah, leave them off. Okay. I mean, That's if you don't intentionally activate them, because it'll cause a response from other agencies. Right. There'll be confusion. It, it doesn't assist us in anything we're doing. No, I'm just talking about you're leaving the house. You put the alarm Oh, on. you're talking about set your alarm when you leave? Yeah. Yes or no? I mean, you know, no, how does that affect the, the system? I, I think that's go ahead. Go ahead and set the alarm. Okay. All right, so Chief, Chief Police will set the alarm. Okay, well, folks, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate all the feedback that we've got. We're going to take as much as we can get on board. I'm going to thank people. Uh, let, let's note that the Sierra Point Yacht Club very generously gave us use of the facility. Thank you, thank you. And your friends at Jamba Juice donated to Jamba Juice. So uh, feel free to take that with you. The uh, room display is in the back of the room with the, along with the fire authority folks. Sing happy birthday to Captain Lee when you see him as Mark Lee's birthday. And uh, feel free to stick around and talk to our CEVs as they get their children up inside. I'm sorry, none of them outside. They transition to the outside. So we're really going to let people outside. If the uh, CEVs can look for the stunning man, the lovely lady with the hat and the vest. The new, the new bar, anybody wants to be in a CEV, please see Karen back in the room. Thank you.